Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. December 3rd, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast of Interminable Length, episode number 720. And here we are. Almost the end of the year. Which means the 11th month of the month, year has passed and we have one month left so where did I put it there it is it's time for this jumping right in this is a month ups and downs of just for some reason getting because of uh one of the the uh, uh youtube streams that i watch is uh grinding gear and they've been going through the final fantasy 14 msq and they've been doing a few other games as well and one of those is actually jumping into some of the wow classic features uh, such as uh, uh classic hardcore where if you die dead that's it no resin no corpse running nothing you die your character is done and then they started going to season discovery and blizzcon ha- happened and there was some discussion about blizzcon and it got me thinking huh maybe i should just jump in a wow again just for like a month i'll just pay for a month and and get get some wow in see how i feel mm-hmm. I'm right again well i mean you you were hardcore into it for quite some time so i'm not surprised to hear that after you uh broke away that it just sunk its claws right back into you all over again. To be fair, in Shadowlands is when I kind of uh, knocked out, discovered Final Fantasy fourteen, and got completely obsessed. Fair. I still love the game. Still going to keep up on that game. That's going to be a constant subscription, for sure. Then, I heard about Dragonfly, the latest expansion that was really kind of exciting so i bought into that bought the expansion played for a month got got a character up to 70 faded back into final fantasy 14 and then all of a sudden i get this resurgence and here i am back again and playing everything was kind of slow loading i have it on a what am my off a, a side SSD drive, but everything was slow loading up and everything like that. So today I finally uninstalled everything from over there, reinstalled it onto my main uh, SSD drive, and that was redundant. SSD, anyways. And uh, now it works great. And I'm happy as a clam. And I, I'm like, pop up, jump in, run a dungeon, work on my reputation, trying to catch up on the story. 
kind of wish they had had it along the lines of the MSQ route that Final Fantasy XIV has, so that it doesn't just like give me the quest to go into the very latest chapter without me knowing anything that's happened between the start of Dragonflight and now. Mm-hmm. Like I miss patch point one one point five one point five one point seven. And we're at at, at at six or we're at ten two now. So there's a few chapters. Already got a few red tears. Tears all red gay up in there. I need to catch up on gear. It's a whole bunch of catch up stuff I need to work on. Still not doing so bad. I'm enjoying myself with some of the dynamic flying. I mean the BlizzCon announcement was talking about the word within, which has an amazing cinematic. I swear to God, and when that cinematic was real person and everything else was CGI, but from everything that I've heard, it actually still is CGI. All CGI. But it was so good. You gotta see it. Maybe I'll recommend it later. Mm. So, hmm. there was that. Found out that I can eat Cheetos. Uh, decided to order myself some um, finger chopsticks. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it, so the, the intent was the just the, 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 the... Basically, I can't use chopsticks for the life of me. Just the mm-hmm. regular ass chopsticks. Just give me like food tweezers is what I need. Which is kind of what chopsticks are without the the hinge but you know i just not that's nice I don't you know broke david already he called it food tweezers <laughs> food tweezers i mean because yeah I mean, when you think about it they're just tweezers but specifically for food right i don't want some you nose know, plucking tweezers to eat my food with i want something that's food grade and put quotes around that. Anyways, <sighs> Continue. We need to- chopsticks, that sort of thing. You know, something that I don't have to worry about them like coming apart and going in awkward things. I just need some to tweeze my food to keep my fingers clean. Mm-hmm. That's what I need. I had some great DVD. But with all the ups, there of course are downs. First off, my job doesn't really have any training. There's like, oh, you gotta use this tool and this tool, read the manual. And like, I have no direction here. So it was really boring. Manager started to call me out. I'm like, I'm just so confused. I have no direction. I don't know what I'm doing. I know I'm supposed to do this. I, I figure out how to use this tool. I, I got some idea of this, but it's there's no st- structure. Like, no structure to the training. Mm-hmm. In fact, there is no training. No training to the training is what I'm saying. <laughs> so this is my goal right now would be to fumble my way through to expertise and then come in up with basic training course. Probably something that's going to be like instructor led like me. Because I'm a trainer. That sort of thing. So that's kind of a goal. The only thing is. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> and in some of it's not. Bad. Not hard stuff to do. It's just. Knowing what. The process is. What, what mm. things I'm looking for. How to effectively get through things. That sort of things. 
So, obviously, because it's work, I can't say everything specifically. But in addition, two weeks ago, Gary and I decided to talk about adulting on the show. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up now. What I didn't realize was there was a setting in the software that didn't have my mic. That wasn't doing anything. So we go through most of the show, then suddenly somebody in chat says, hey, we haven't been able to hear Jeff <laughs> the entire show. And I'm like, I'm already kind of depressed from work. Being like, one, I'm bored because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not really getting any direction. <laughs> and two, I did <coughs> one stupid, stupid thing for an entire show. That was also the week before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I work at Thanksgiving because of my, my specific job, it is a, a, you don't get any days off. New Year's Eve, no. <laughs> that is a no on the day off. That is one of the no. biggest days of the year. Uh, so, no. <laughs> All hands on deck. So, I work Thanksgiving, not that big of a deal. But the next day when we have everybody, because everybody in my team on my project is there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's our kind of overlap days because we cover seven days a week, but obviously each of us take five of those days. So kind of have two off shifts, right? So we decided to have our, they decided to have our Thanksgiving day potluck that day. And then once all the food was there and everybody was there, basically everybody was in the break room, eating food, laughing, socializing. It was noisy and it was a lot for me. I was a little bit overloaded, so I kind of kept myself separate, had some food, went back to my desk. But apparently it was also my manager's birthday, so they had a cake and they had a cake cutting and they had everybody and they had they they had had me come with them so they could we could sing happy birthday and um I think I had a panic attack or an anxiety attack or something. I don't know, but I wasn't feeling good. I was having a little trouble breathing. <laughs> and so at a good point. I couldn't eat the cake anyways. I'm not ready for cake net right now. And then besides the fact I'm not a cake fan anyways. <laughs> Just not a fan of cake. And, and, and so I left. Fortunately, it was near the end of my shift. I went back to my desk. Just kind of put my head down. Kind of tried to center myself. Breathe. And then head home. And I was still anxious and just the next day something came up me not knowing it was going somebody said hey could you take care of that and i'm like what huh what huh what i don't know what's going on i was all confused i go go what huh what there's a thing oh there it is oh and then it's like oh somebody started doing it okay well i think i don't need to do anything because somebody's already taken care of it and then somebody says Hey, did you do the thing? I'm like, what? Huh? But I thought I was just all confused. And basically I was just extremely frustrated. Like I thought somebody else was taking care of it. <laughs> but uh. no, just because somebody started a thing, I was, we could, should be continuing to do the thing because I was asked to do it. And then I, I, I was just completely confused and I had in some sense lingering in anxiety from the day before 
and it just i was essentially paralyzed i didn't i i had no idea what to do i was short circuited talked with my manager a little bit explained how i felt what was going on i was like i i was like i, I hey uh okay i need to create this thing uh, uh okay can, can you walk me through it i'm asking for help and didn't get any help and i was just lost and i just <clears throat> let it go and then somebody says hey can, can you just go ahead and do it okay and it, 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 i was just paralyzed by the whole thing mm. and just more of that kept piling on and piling on so the rest of the month i uh, I get home and I just didn't want to think. I just wanted to play games. Fortunately, I had D and D uh, last night, which was fun. Another up, that was good. Um, and actually, today things started to click about what I needed to do. I did get some help when I asked for some help. So things have gotten a bit better. So things have just been going up and down and I've just had to start dealing with anxiety. Maybe still dealing with it, but uh, it's better. So. Well, I'm glad things have improved. Mm -hmm. um, as a note to our audience just so folks are aware we were expecting to have a show last sunday and we didn't um and two of us uh just didn't really have the capacity for it which is sort of unheard of from us so that was a bit unexpected um and now you're sort of understanding a little bit more of that um as to how things I, went I, I didn't have any spoons <laughs> And sometimes we need to say that. Yep. Like, I think people need to understand that <clears throat> we all have challenges in our lives and there are moments when you need to recognize. Like in the past, I think we would have felt, we would have probably used the analogy and said, like, I have to put up the white flag. Like I have to give in or like uh -huh. whatever. And it's like, no, that's not it at all. Like we've, I think as a, as a Western society, we've, come forward in terms of our thinking and said, you know what, you can't be everywhere. You can't do everything. You're not a superhero as much as like we, you know, see that portrayed to us in forms of entertainment. Like it's just not possible to get everything accomplished or to feel like you're actually accomplishing things. And so sometimes you have to take that, you know, into account and say, mm, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. You can't do that, whatever that is. Um, and I think that for a long time, we came up in a generation where it was like, you just did what needed to be done despite the cost. And that cost could be like physical, it could be mental. Um, and since the millennia, I think we've, we've shifted and adjusted to understand like when you need to say, mm, no, <laughs> not a thing. The words suck it up come to mind. Right. Like, and this is the thing I think about at where I work is that sometimes people make comment or, you know, they're surprised as to how much I do and the amount of stuff that I get accomplished and all the things I work on. And I don't take that as criticism, but I also don't accept it as compliment because right. I think because I think of it as, well, this is what needs to be done. And I just was part of it. my upbringing. I don't want to speak for a whole generation, but my upbringing was like, you get done what needs to be done. End of story. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> you know? yeah. So <sighs> to your point, Damon, like, I think that was something that got said. I think that came via the baby boomers down through to our generation, which was like, life's hard, suck it up, buttercup. Uh -huh. like you just, you gotta do what you gotta do. 
But we've been learning, I think, over the past probably decades specifically. And I think COVID was huge for for a lot of us to be like, oh, I'm burning out or I I don't have enough bandwidth. I don't have enough capacity. I don't have enough energy. I I don't have the spoons. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I think there's nothing wrong with taking that um, as an assessment. So. There we go. So glad things are feeling better, at least today, Jeff. Yeah. And fortunately, I think the weekend, last weekend, helped a bit. As well as um, this weekend should help. And now that I've got a little bit more of an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm hoping my next work week will be better i'll get more proficient and then hopefully get into the next level of things because there's other things i haven't been given responsibility for yet but i'm assuming that once i mastered my initial stuff move up in the tiers right there we go and i think that's just natural like i tell folks especially anytime they're going to start a new job and i had to remind myself of this like it takes you time. You can't like we don't live in an age where you can get quicker, better, faster than whatever it's going to take to get it done. So mm-hmm. it, it'll be minimum 12 months to three years for you to feel like usually it's the first 12 months. I, I say it's the Muppet like flailing stage where you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, and you're just like trying to figure things out and put pieces together and pray to God you don't fuck it up bad enough that you get fired. Um, <laughs> and then by the time you get to three years, you're like, okay, I think I know what I'm doing. And then when you get to five, that's dangerous because that's when you could become a pompous ass and you could be like, I got this. I know what I'm doing. And that's usually when the rug gets pulled out under you or some shit happens. So then you're like, God damn it, Murphy. I don't need time. I know what time it is. <laughs> Just say For those that don't know Move what that was game. reference to, I'm talking about Sorry. Murphy's Law. <laughs> <sighs> true. Anyways, Damon. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> to kind of go on an opposite sort of track, as it were, um, my November was spent traveling quite a bit. Um, normally I go to visit AJ, um, Zio, he's been on the show for uh, my birthday. I usually go to DC area, spend time with him, hang out with him. Um, well, he was in Atlanta that weekend. He had a work thing that he, you know, obviously couldn't get out of. So, um, that and wanting to do this for a while, I decided to head to Norfolk, Virginia for the Virginia Bear Contest. Um, and AJ happened to want, was also going, so it kind of became our trip sort of somewhere else. Um, he stayed with me, we stayed in the hotel, and it was a really good time. Um, I got there Thursday, um, flew out, flew into Virginia, which but which weirdly was cheaper than flying directly to Baltimore, even though the plane went directly went to Baltimore and changed to Norfolk. Don't ask me. Whatever. I don't I don't know. <laughs> anyway, because the idea was I could fly to Baltimore and meet up with AJ and then we'd drive down, but whatever. Anywho, um, um Congrats to the winners. Um, seeing the contest was kind of fun. There were seven contestants, four titles, and um, it was all in all a pretty good weekend. Um, um, AJ and I went to the coast and saw the ocean. We did our normal, like, went, and went to really good food things and had fun eating and enjoying a lot of good food. Um um had some really good conversations met some really nice people i met the now current virginia bear um um, tango um really nice really nice person very fun um they showed so much energy and vibrancy that i was i was 
I was surprised. There was one person who ended up getting second that I was thinking might be a good, might have over, like, over, like, gotten gotten the win, but they didn't. So congratulations to Tango and um, the other people. Um, that was kind of fun. Um, yeah. Uh, after that, came home, literally worked for two days, and then that Wednesday um, to Greyhound, to Louisville for Thanksgiving. Um, I hadn't realized when I made this plan that that was going to be the situation. I probably should have taken Monday and Tuesday off because I did jack shit at work. Um, (laughs) I will admit that. (laughs) I will own. um, It got, anyway, you're trying to you know, stay focused, but you realize that you're planning for the next trip and not really thinking and focusing too much on work and you end up like not paying attention and not doing a whole lot anyway. But uh, went home to see family, um, got to hang out with my brother a lot. And um, our Thanksgiving, um, one of my aunts who lives in North Carolina and hasn't been home for Thanksgiving in... 10 or 20 years um, um, came this weekend, that weekend, um, which was a really nice surprise. So all of my living direct on my mom's side relatives were, um, not relatives, but her family, direct family, her immediate family Mm -hmm. was there, um, which was a wonderful thing to see. Um, uh, One of my cousins, took some pictures and was able to show the family. Uh, we did like eight generations of them. And that was kind of fun. We were in this old house um, that had been rehabbed. It was an Airbnb um, and looked really fun, really good. And it helped because it gave us enough room to do everything um, and have everyone have a space to like eat and be, you know, comfortable. Um other than that, didn't do too much in Louisville. Um, it was really, really cold that weekend, if anyone remembers. It was like mm-hmm. the temperature dropped quite significantly, and I did not feel like trying to venture out and ca- try to catch, like, Ubers and stuff to get there, like, out and back. So I just decided to stay in a hotel, um, stay in a really nice hotel. Um, I will probably consider that one for my go to hotel when I visit Louisville in the future because I really like my room. The big thing was I had a couch. Um, you don't understand how much it, how amazing it is to have a couch to sit on when you are traveling as opposed to like whatever office chair you may have or a bed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, now I'm here and um, getting ready for men's chorus concerts, which will be this week. And preparing for stuff starting in January. Yeah. Gary? Um, well, kind of like Jeff, I had an, uh, an up and down November. Uh, started off the month. Um, sorry, I'm actually looking at the calendar trying to remember what happened on the very first couple of days. Uh, basically work type things. And then we had our, uh, local election. Oh, got called the night before our, uh, prime or not primary general election, look, local election. Um, last year. Yeah. Last year I actually worked the election Mm -hmm. at my local polling place. And then I was going to work the primary in May, but I had to travel for work. So I told him I wasn't able to do it. And then I never heard anything ever again until the night before. Um, and they were like, oh, we had someone back out and we were wondering if you could come in. And I'm like, no, like I had initially taken the day off work, but then two or three weeks beforehand, I hadn't heard anything and they didn't get a hold of me. And they said there was going to be some new training. They changed the system. So I took back my time off because I was like, well, then I'm going to work because I got shit to get done. So calling me the night before to ask me to come in to help with that is not ideal. So I didn't do that. Um, And then I was off the rest of that week uh, for my birthday vacation. So went to Detroit, uh, Mm. went to concert number three this year. Mm. Um, Drew and I saw Depeche Mode. And that's a kind of an an ironic, interesting story. The opening band called Dive, that's D-I-I-V, 
I guess they're out of Brooklyn. They're very like emo kind of like sort of punky like rock. I don't know how mm-hmm. else to explain it. They look like a bunch of skater boys, but they play like rock. But they don't. Anyway, it's a long story. They were the opening <laughs> act. The sound wasn't great. The lights weren't great. Made me very nervous. At least a third of the arena wasn't filling in with seats. And I was like, this is a disaster. Like, because I thought this was meaning that not that many people were interested in seeing Depeche Mode. We were back at the same arena we had seen Adam Lambert and Queen the previous month. Mm-hmm. So I was like, maybe they should have booked a smaller place. I was very nervous. And then, like, uh, they had a half an hour downtime to switch out the set and blah, blah, blah. Um, make some changes. And then when Depeche Mode came on, uh, when they did one of the sweeps with the lights across the arena, I was very pleased to see that all the seats had filled in. And it was just like <laughs> Adam Lambert and Queen, and it was a packed arena. Um, so there was that. Um, and then we went and saw that we went to the Motown Museum because we were in Detroit uh, the next day. That was really good. I highly suggest anybody who's ever in Detroit goes and visits the Motown Museum. It's very educational, very interesting. Um, I love the way that they put the whole uh, tour together. You get a tour guide, so they kind of walk you through in groups. Um, Yeah, Mm. very cool. And then we uh, left, drove down to Cincinnati, had the birthday weekend. That was good and fun. Uh, Left on Monday morning, drove all the way from Cincinnati back home. Got home, unpacked the car, changed clothes, went to work, had an event that evening uh, to promote our free condom distribution program, had packed everything in the car, took my lunch, um, was in my office at work, went out to get in the car and started the car. And I noticed as soon as I started the car that it was acting strange. And I quickly assessed that I had no power steering. Oh, no. And I was like, yeah, this is bad. So I put the car into drive and it drifted like the two or three inches it barely moved back into place put the car in park uh got out lifted up the hood and sure enough there's the serpentine belt intact just not on all the pulleys oh like yeah and i was like well fuck my life um so called AAA. they had a tow truck there in seven minutes it was wild Holy shit. what Right. And I was thinking it was going to be at least an hour. So like I'm scrambling at work and I'm like trying to like make a call to the organizer of the event and be like, hey, I've got a vehicle problem. I can't make it. My apologies. Like on the last minute cancellation. So sorry. I would come with a coworker, but the coworkers already left because there was Mm. a different program in the building that was also going to the same event. Mm. Um, And a coworker gave me a ride home, but then my coworker couldn't immediately give me a ride home because the tow truck was in the parking lot blocking everybody basically like trying to get my vehicle it was a whole thing um so then i got rides for the next week Mm. basically um i'm just gonna like save a lot of this long legacy story but uh suffice it to say i have been in the midst of getting a new vehicle for a couple of weeks now oh Uh, oh. but it's been very stressful because these weren't on my terms Mm -hmm. Uh, not how i wanted things to be and the reason why i'm doing this is because uh i did have it towed out to the dealership the dealership called i ended up calling the dealership the next day late in the afternoon because i didn't hear from them which i thought was weird um i called them that very day and said and they were still open and i was like hey i'm having my car towed out blah 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 so that's when they told me, yep, it's the power steering pump. Uh, we figured it out. By the way, they don't make that part anymore. Uh, so we've searched everywhere to try to get one, and it's very difficult. Uh, so you're looking at a two-week to two-month window before your car can be fixed, and it's also going to be very expensive. Jesus. Well, to be fair, she's 13. Fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know. I've had my car for a long time and she just turned 190,000 miles. <laughs> so like I kind of knew this was coming and I was hoping I was going to have another year. Um, yeah. So mm. I'll tell the story another day, but uh, I've, I've, I've been driving, uh, testing a couple of different vehicles. Anyways, it's been very stressful. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm sure. I bet. So like, this, this is the adulting thing. Like, I went to a concert. I had a birthday. Um, it was nice. It was good to be around with friends. And then fucking more adulting. Um, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. 
And so, like, you know, I've kind of been in the market, like, keeping an eye out, looking at things. I, I got one vehicle that I initially started with that I, like, I really liked aesthetically, and then I quickly figured out that I didn't like it. Um, so within 24 hours, I was like, nope, not the vehicle. Um, and here's the whole thing is, like, I don't have a vehicle, and I don't really have a vehicle to borrow from anybody to get me around. So, like, my coworkers are giving me rides back and forth to work, which is really nice of them, but that's about it. Like, I don't – so I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I can't really go test drive. Mm. So it's it's unless you do like Ubers and go into that places and doing all that, which is always which costs money, which is always costly. Yeah, right. So I was like, okay. And anyway, so I've been through a couple of things, and then yesterday with my neighbor, they were kind of like, "That's not the same car you've had." And I was like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> we have to catch up on that, but um, yeah, there's been a lot of that. Uh, and then oh, so then when we were at the concert. To go back a couple weeks, um, I noticed halfway through the concert, I started having this like uncomfortable feeling um, with my sinuses in my throat, which then really pissed me off because I know my body well enough to be like, this is a sign. This mm -hmm. means I could be getting sick, which then was making me really like livid because mm -hmm. I didn't go to a concert to get sick because right. motherfuckers around me are like screaming and like shouting and singing and like, you know, Spitting. just spreading everything mm -hmm. of whatever it is so um that night as we're walking back to the casino that we were staying at very thankful to drew's uh, good friend who had so many casino points apparently that they just gave us a hotel room for free nice. so that was very nice of them yes oh and we had some very good barbecue in detroit that night before we went mm. to the concert um Anyways, uh, so I went through Instacart and paid for someone to go to the local pharmacy and bring me a bunch of emergency vitamin C tablets, Zycam, you name it. Like, God damn it, I am not getting sick. <laughs> so I, you betcha, and I like, and I left it out on purpose, sort of as a as a hint, sort of for Drew. Like, he also could take some stuff because he had been coughing. Um, I think it was mostly sinuses, like in the first part of like when we were there mm -hmm. and some sneezing and stuff. And I was like, Jiminy Christmas. And then, and then he stopped and he didn't do it anymore. Like basically the most, most of that, like next day. And it wasn't until we were in Cincinnati, like a day or two later, I noticed. And, and he was like sneezing a lot. And I was like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm just having problems with my allergies. Or whatever. And I was like, okay. But the whole time I was in Cincinnati, I was still popping vitamin C's, like taking the Zycam, doing all that stuff. Cause I was like, no, not happening. So anyways, that was the start of that. Then we get to Thanksgiving. Best friend comes up. We like do a little bit of travel, um, ended up over in Parma, Ohio, which is South of Cleveland. Um, it's a high like Polish community, um, ethnicity group. So we went to an authentic Polish deli. We got very yummy food there, um, that we bought to take back, um, mm. went to a shitty 24 hour diner, um, locally, and so, yeah, uh, so my guts have been on like a journey this past month. <laughs> and then because of how old I am, I now qualify for a certain vaccine. So I went yesterday and got my first of the two series of the Shingrix, which is your shingles vaccine. Mm. And my body hates me. Of course it does. I'm OK. I'm just like having some kind of gut stuff like icky yeah oh, yeah no and the pharmacist warned me she said so you're probably gonna have some side effects she's like i made my whole family get it when it came onto market it was really funny uh and then she said but uh but i'm gonna give you the heads up she's like you'll probably be mostly okay with this one she's like but when the second one comes in a couple months just be ready oh dear like really <laughs> she goes yeah the second one's usually worse i was like great so i have that to look forward to in february <laughs> Um, Friday was World AIDS Day. I put on a memorial program event at work. Uh, this year was the 35th anniversary of World AIDS Day. So it's mm. been 35 years of that uh, day occurring since 1988. Um, it's a big deal. I put a lot of effort into it. Um, it's over an hour long program. This year we adapted and we did art therapy sessions locally and people uh, made different forms of artwork that were actually put onto a display, which was the part of the social reception. So there was a lot of like new stuff. And of course I like stress myself out and do all these things. So that's a part of the whole ups and downs of November because I missed half the month due to vacation and holiday and stuff and then the car. And so it's no wonder like I'm a big stress ball. Mm-mm-mm. 
So I'm the second host that last week was like, you know what? <laughs> nope. Not, not doing it. <laughs> Murray doing the World Aid Day thing for work. I was literally working through the weekend, like, of Thanksgiving, like, do, trying to do some things when I could, because then the work computer wouldn't remotely connect. That pissed me off, too. Um, <clears throat> so it's just been a lot of long days, some not so, like, good sleep nights. Um, in the past week and a half, I have fallen asleep three nights without my CPAP. Oops. Like so exhausted tired that i just pass out and then i wake up many hours later with some dry mouth and, uh-huh. and then of course my throat's irritated and oh yeah yeah so it's uh, been stellar yeah so, so fun so i'm kind of i'm kind of over all that oh and then we're launching a new software system this week at work so yeah the company's coming in and training us like on site this whole week Mm. Uh, so tomorrow is some training and then we get to do some mock things later. It's a, it's a new electronic medical record system for our clinics. Mm. Um, and it appears that, uh, there are already issues. So that's great. So I'm so looking forward to that as a quick rewrite. Uh, the world AIDS day Memorial event went very well. I got lots of compliments. Um, I had some technical issues during it. Uh, my boss was there, which was great. It was very helpful. Uh, and my boss's boss's boss was there, the director of the whole building, and said to me after the whole program was over, it came up and said, uh, I just want to compliment you on how well you handled that technical issue during that moment. So it's it, the program is mostly ending. And one of the last things that we do that I've created is this big thing where we do we, – I read aloud – all the first names of all the people that lived in Erie County over the decades that have passed away. Mm. Just a lot of names. Mm-hmm. And while this is being read, the lights are brought down and there's these little tea lights and shout out to my um, task force co-members that came up with this idea. This year they put the tea lights. Um, they actually, they hand painted them on their own. I didn't ask for this. They hand painted the little flame on the little led like tea light. Cause they're leds. They painted them red. So now all the lights glow red. Cause they know that's what I wanted years ago was I wanted oh, red tea lights. Wow. But red tea lights are like fucking five to 10 times more than just like plain white tea lights. So anyways, they like did a little craft project <laughs> and like painted all the flames red. <laughs> for all, the, and there's hundreds of the them. Painting the tea red. Painting the tea lights red. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they, there's hundreds of them and they did all that in the past week or so, I guess. Anyways, they brought them all and then when they put them on the stage, they put them in a big ribbon shape. <gasps> oh, wow. So complimented on it and then I had to give, I was like, no, no, that was them. I had nothing to do with that. Like, was, So anyways, when the lights are down, there's the red ribbon that's lit up on the stage on the floor, but then I also have this big visual because there's a projector, and I have this ribbon that has people's first names in it that glows. And oh. then all these, there's this visual where all the years come up as numbers sequentially over time, and then I'm saying all the names. So in the middle of this poignant, quiet, meditative mm-hmm. memorial moment is when the laptop has a skits out and crashes the PowerPoint that's projecting. <laughs> and I have to quickly restart the PowerPoint, get it back to the, where I left off at, and get it to where the year was that I was approximately. <laughs> oh, wow. Stage. And I got complimented by some of my coworkers on how well I handled that, that snafu for about seven seconds where things just weren't going. And I have to laugh about it now because you weren't laughing then. No. And as my boss said, I was so proud. No, my boss's boss's boss. The director said, I was so proud that you did not show any rage because <laughs> she knew I was like going to like lose my shit. And I said, yes, it was all it was all in here. <laughs> it's not ex- Internal rage. You because- felt the rage. You just right. didn't show the rage. Yes, because what I wanted to say was, God damn <laughs> motherfucking. <laughs> I was just so mad. But um, yeah, it was kind of interesting. So yeah, so now for the entire month of December in our local library, we are going to have this two-sided visual display 
available to the public to be able to go see. So wonderful. Which that was a whole exercise because the display is on a stand that was custom made and it's on caster wheels. So we had to very carefully roll it over from where we were in the library uh, structure around to get to the first floor, take it, sort of take it apart in two main pieces, flip the bottom upside down. I brought my, I knew I had to do this. I brought my power drill so I could take all the caster wheels off because they weren't locking because we're leaving it for an entire month and we needed to not have small children and or adults like bump it. Right. And then like push it and things. Right. So tomorrow I get to go back and uh, finish up a couple of things, but yeah, so it's been a lot of effort and a lot of work. Hey. So this time of year is always very stressful for me from October through November into December. And now after about another week, it'll probably calm down. And then, oh, my God, like it's going to be the holidays and the end of the goddamn year. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Anyways, that's a lot of stuff that's been going on with us. So, hey, uh, thanks for listening and watching. <laughs> <laughs> and for that. Uh, here's some feedback. Gary. Uh, we got two emails this month. The first one, not a surprise. We sort of discussed this. Uh, so this is about CAWL 179. 719. Oh, good, good catch. I was like, 179. I'm like, that didn't even sound right. No, you're right. 719. Uh, it says, hey guys, I hate to be complaining, but I'm sending this email in case you are unaware. I downloaded COL 719 and sadly could not hear Jeff speak at all. We know. I could hear Gary and background music. I went to look at YouTube today and it seems to be operating the same way. I've listened to quite a few podcasts where Jeff's volume was very low and hard to hear while all the other guys were okay. COL 719 is the first time that I re recall not hearing Jeff at all. Just wanted to let you know, MTNB. If you made it to the end, you finally heard me. What? If you made it to the end, you probably finally heard me, but... Right, right. A, a when, very exasperated last... me. Yeah, in the last minutes. So here's what everybody needs to know. If you've made it into this part of the podcast, Jeff and I made the decision to move ahead and post the show. We mm. knew that he was not audible through it, and it was just me. And the synopsis that I wrote was meant to help convey because it said it was a one-sided conversation. <laughs> See, David gets it right away, but. Oh, geez. Okay. Not the best choice, apparently, because people didn't understand. It happens. And we, and we didn't put a, we didn't put a whole like blurb in front of it and be like, Hey, FYI, there's a technical issue. And therefore, if you listen, you will only hear half of this. So for those of you that wanted to just listen to me, that's what you got. Yeah. And I will say, <laughs> say, if anything, it's an, I fucked up situation. And I acknowledged it. And I was kicking myself really, really hard after that. And then I had now, the rest of the month. To, to Jeff's situation, just so folks are aware, and I think I kind of discussed this with you, Jeff, and I don't know if it was on air at the very end or not. Um, Damon is well aware of this issue from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. we, a couple of times when we have recorded Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, C-O-L-D-R specifically, at what, I don't want to say it's a half dozen times, three times, four times now. We have started recording and then discovered... OBS, the software we use, does some damn update or something, just like goddamn Skype, and like it doesn't keep not. everything the way it's supposed to. Right. So now when we record COLDR, I share my screen, Damon watches and looks to make sure that the the, the display reader shows that the bars are moving on the audio so that all the sounds are being picked up. Right. Because at least twice now, we've we we have literally re-recorded an entire episode after yes. we discovered mm -hmm. that we didn't have all the it, audio. It's happened on this show before too, but I think yeah. most of those times we just were sort of like either re-record or just be like no show. So right. with that. But Jeff and I had made the decision when we discovered the issue to not go back and re-record. Um, 
the whole which thing. I think, which I think makes sense considering everything that was going on. Um, it was right before that was the day I was traveling from Virginia. So yes, right before Thanksgiving, it, when were you going to do it? You would have had to have done it like that very evening, which would have been really weird and going on super long. And now, and it was, it ended up kind of being also that episode, which is kind of sad, but, uh, you guys missed me having a therapy therapy session with with Gary. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it, we'll get to it a little bit later. But episode C O L seven nineteen was let's talk about adulting, and so we had very frank conversation about like being adults now and what you face as you're young, older versus when you're younger. And I remember part of the conversation was about like, I remember being a kid and being like, I can't wait to fucking grow up and be an adult. And then later at certain points, I'm like, this is the dumbest decision I ever made. <laughs> Cause now I have responsibilities like I bills don't be to an adult. Pay and shit, you know, anyways. Mm-hmm. So there's that. So thank you, MTNB, for pointing that out. It was not you. It was not your systems. It was a technical glitch. We decided to post it anyways. But um, in the future, if we decide to do something, we will put a preface at, at the top of the show so a, people a know. very clear. That. Yes. One, not a subtle hint. Yeah. But, but uh, when I saw saw the synopsis uh, that Gary put on there, uh, yeah, I was like, hey, that's... That's you, you know, you that know what would have been really would right. have been really funny is if Gary had had read the synopsis as well. Like just had it all be the it's all so Gary big moment. Big. Just just <laughs> anyway. No, that's just me. Nobody yeah. nobody needs that. Nobody wants that. Um no, we don't. We, so we did that at one time where where we basically uh, uh, rotated who was doing the synopsis. In this episode of Cubs Out Loud, I remember Damon Newton doing. Yep. Wow. So, yeah, anyways, uh, that was the whole thing, and we decided to push ahead and, and put it out there anyways. So, there we go. One for the books. All right, our second email um, called Advice. It says, hi, I'm Ace, he, him, in parentheses, they wrote other pronouns, and only recently started watching the podcast and found it interesting. I'm a trans guy living in the South and I'm still pre-transition and not out to everyone. And then in parentheses, they explain mainly because of fear of judgment. So any advice on how to let people know without saying it straight up? Mm. I, here's my, here's my feeling on this. Just this obviously everyone's listening but i'm saying this directly to jeff and damon yeah i feel like i want to reach out to our previous guests when we've done the mm -hmm. the trans topic specifically mm -hmm. trans bear listener and and um and uh, tv and and say to them like hey we got this email if you would love to like give some advice or even have them back on to discuss this uh, I think that would be better than me mm -hmm. saying things because I don't know this aspect of how to subtly I, I would, inform people about this. I would say, if anything, we are not qualified to give you proper advice. Because we haven't Somewhat. been in that situation. We've been in similar situations. Just right. Like, like, I mean, but yeah, but like, I mean, might be it's a little a, bit different. So I, it's been a long time since I've come out to anyone. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's probably because of two things. One, I'm older now, uh, much older. And two, I just feel like you, you just figure it out. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like sometimes I will give the. The only advice I would give, because he's mentioning the South, and um, I'm mm -hmm. technically from there, I'm from Kentucky, whatever, anyway. Um, I would Who's say, yeah. <laughs> um, I would say the only little bit of advice I would give you is only let someone know that you truly trust That's and fair. still be careful. 
Like that's right. the only big advice I would give you because um, depending on how big your town is or small your town is, depending on um, several other factors, um, it could be a potential, you know, life-changing situation, not just for your immediate, you know, surroundings, but for all over. So just definitely be careful and um, let some, if you have to trust the person that you're going to let them know, if you're going to let them know, truly trust them. And if you yeah, don't, I, if you're uncertain, maybe best to leave it be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think um, to Damon's point, uh, the, Sorry, I'm like going back through our, our stuff real quick because um, I'm going to shout out these three episodes. Um, episode 514 um, called Trans Bear Listener. Episode 522, Trans Bear Interview. And 683 from earlier this year, um, Trans Bear Listener 2, um, when we had Built a Bear on. Those were guests that we had that had reached out to us and were interested in being on the podcast. Um, that's who I'm referring to that would probably be, uh, in my opinion, more aligned to providing some uh -huh. advice. My my gut instinct is, and thank you, Damon, for kind of pivoting around and talking about the fact that they said that they live in the South. Um, I live up north. So my perspective is very skewed. I feel this is just my personal opinion uh, from what the media has been representing to me. The South is just a hot mess. So I don't know how good that situation can be in terms of like talking to anybody. I think your best resource, though, would be to find any local LGBTQI plus like entities, networks, um, groups. Uh, mm -hmm. whether or not it's a community center, um, a health center, uh, foundations, um, a chorus, yeah. Therapy focused entities. Like, I don't, I don't know where you are, obviously, like if you're near a major metropolitan area, if you happen to be near one, like within a reasonable driving distance, you're probably going to find a lot of resources. And the reason why I'm saying this to you, um, AR is I think the advice should be best served by someone within the community who is of your, so hopefully your geographic kind of region to, to our country, but more importantly can become available and help you determine like the ins and outs of things. Right. Because to me, there's so many variables and opportunities and possibilities in lots of different directions whether they be, you know, positive or not. Um, but I appreciate that you're listening and watching and, you know, when you feel compelled to ask us, because I think that's sort of what we've shifted to over the years is trying to be available to, for people to learn about themselves in various ways. Um, but I do think uh, that's my feeling is reaching out to our guests um, and seeing if they're willing to get in touch with you. And then also they may, they may know of things that we're just not aware of in terms of like resources, whether it be websites or social media platforms or any of that kind of stuff. Right. So, yeah. In addition to that, uh, we had a couple of people like us and follow us on Facebook. So we would like to thank Carl O'Shea, Anderson Wolfgang, and John Clark. Much shorter list. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> for some reason, suddenly the long list of names uh, trend came to an end this month. I don't know why. Um, and nothing uh, of particular uh, on YouTube at the moment. So we'll go over to Jeff. Uh, but we did get a whole series of... <laughs> Twitter followers. <laughs> Thank you for following us on the platform formerly known as Twitter, even though they still have Twitter.com. They also have X.com. So just saying. 
Uh, thanks for following us, Mr. Boosy Boy. Uh, someone by the name of Daddy McQuag. Hmm. Wonder who that is. Uh, Acre underscore XXX. Dead to the bone nine. Pup DJ. Drooling and Toe. One. The Sea Garden. Uh, Middle Monty 07. JP Ban 9, Zanny Zane Boy, and Mo Cub Hot for You. Do either of my co hosts recognize Missouri Cub Hot for You? Um, I mean, I don't recognize the name, if that's what you know. I have to go check it out now. Okay. Let me look stuff up. Well, you look that up, and we'll thought. circle back around later. Okay. I know I follow him on Twitter. <laughs> I do not follow him. Oh. Anyways. I don't hmm. think I'm familiar with him. Okay. <laughs> well, um, well, we'll continue on as we move yes. on. Yes. Go ahead. Show. Keep going. Gary, yes. What's been going on over in Patreon? Uh, Patreon has been doing a whole bunch of things. They've made some platform changes. Uh, we haven't really dived into that part of the pool. Uh, there's now a chat feature, like you can like chat with the host or your community. Um, mm. Listen, I'm getting older, and like I, <laughs> I'm not so sure I'm gonna be able to hang with the technology advances over time. I'm just owning it right now. But um, in addition to that, we do want to give some big bear cub hugs to our patrons um, at the Cubster level: Charles W, Daniel C, and Michael K. At the U Bear level: uh, Dave T, Lee, Michael Q, and Tim S. Plus our buddies Hadrian, Lloyd G, and Michael V. So we appreciate all of you being patrons of us. Uh, you can, for a dollar or more, help support the podcast. Uh, it helps pay to keep the lights on, as we like to say. Um, so we greatly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So about those shows. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably... It's been years, I want to say, since, since it's been like this. Uh, we only had two shows for the month of November. Um, we had the what's going on for October at the beginning of the month. And then we did the one sided. Let's talk about adulting <laughs> episode. <laughs> Just one sided to listen to. <laughs> it was actually mm -mm -mm. a good conversation, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we, uh, we had taken time off. We had taken off two weeks. So yeah. there's only just the two shows. So there's that. <sighs> so there's that. Oh, yeah. That also means we're moving to this. That might be too much, even. It was too That's much. Okay. Yeah. It's too much. We had, we had it. Damon, what are you suggesting? Um, so I have a couple. Um, first one is um, Built Like a Keg. Um, this is Yukon Wallace. Um, I found him recently, and he posts quite a lot, and he hits several buttons, and being built like a keg is one of them. Um, but furry red bear, big beard, um, yeah. And he's, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 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 okay, wow. All right, that's a thing. What? I'm scrolling through his Twitter. Oh, yeah. He's quite, he posts a lot. And, um, yes. He's only 36. Shut the front door. Sorry. <laughs> um, so the one thing I do want to say is while his name online may be Yukon Wallace, this man can cosplay as Yukon Cornelius from think, like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer any day. I think that's where he got his name from. If I if I remember first following him, one of the yeah. first things I saw was the um, comparison to Yukon Cornelius. 
But anyway. God, bless. Yeah, but he's quite the sexy bear. And um, and he's not shy, and he posts a lot, and he's, he's, he's fun. He's fun, for sure. Wow. Yep, 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 yep. And then my second one... Um, <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's okay for my second one um we've we've seen this person on on the on the page in the past um on the show in the past um this is um beef cupcake um at thick speedo guy um and it was like quote tweet this with a pic of you in a harness and he's um leather harnesses um leather vest kind of squatch down um jock strap all that kind of fun stuff just great little smile grin on his face yeah i want those gauntlets i probably have those gauntlets <laughs> probably they're really nice but he he's you know i've always been a fan of him and um this is a different side of him our picture of him normally we're getting to see the back and speedo and all that stuff so just thought i was sure uh he's got a problematic mischievous smile i'm just gonna call oh, it out yeah yeah for sure gets himself into trouble i say sure. problematic because it's guaranteed you're gonna get into trouble Hi, with that look dramatic. oh Oh boy, there's that. Um, so yeah, nice, Gary. All right, so I actually have three this time, and this is oh, just wow. to make up sort of for the goof uh, that happened <laughs> last week. So we're just gonna give you lots of porn. Um, so the first one is called "Married Chubby Daddy Returned!" Exclamation point. Um, so this is from a new person I started following oh, called wow. All Mouth No Hands. Oh. Uh, so the caption goes on to explain, I had to show you guys his cock from another angle this time. I couldn't stop sucking. He just kept coming, uh, looking so hot in his work boots. Um, and this is a video. This is a gentleman who uh, provides stress relief services to <laughs> local individuals who will stop by um, his homemade glory hole, basically, um, who I started following. But Damn. yeah. Damn, sorry. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I'm, I'm so. and he's he's very much kind of staying true to the name. I think I saw I saw a video of his, and there was one that he was doing where he had to because it was huge. Um, yes, there was a recent one, and it made me laugh. Um, because let me see if I can. Uh... Oh, there it is. Uh, no, no, this isn't it. Mm-hmm. Let me have to. Where was it? Where was it? I'm looking for. Yeah. Anyways, there is one where he makes comment about um, that he he needed to use his hands because. Um, yeah. I mean, using hands to position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the, not it's, necessarily it, the post part is of the titled, simulation process. I, I, right. I, I can forgive him for that. Well, in this one, so the one that David and I were talking about, it's called, it's titled Girth. And it says, this has to be one of the girthiest cocks I've ever sucked. It was so pretty. When he unzipped his pants, the only thing I could say was OMG. I definitely had to break the quote unquote no hands rule on this cock. Um, yeah. And that's because it is like yeah, so fat. It's so, fat. So thick. Anyways, so there's the first one. <laughs> Yes. Uh, the second uh, Twitter post is um, titled New Mustache, New Hashtag Mustache, actually. Um, and that's because when you see the picture, so this is at Maximus DM underscore MSTR. Um, uh, so this is a Dom Master, uh, Master Maximus um, from Canada. And uh, he did the the November thing. Um he is 
crazy sexy. But the reason why I picked this pick is because I was like, man, I am a sucker for a man in a flannel shirt at this time of year. Like, it is just like, I don't know, bees to honey. And I realize it's a trope, a part of our generation, that this was a whole phase that we went through, that everybody was wearing flannel shirts and jeans when you went out to the bars and stuff. But uh -huh. sexual. God damn. Anyways. I mean, he's very handsome. Like, Yes, he is. It's fucking hot. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so there's that. And then the very last one. This is another new person that I started following. This is what this is what this is turning into, in case anybody hasn't figured out. I'm just gonna start posting and picking things that are newer. Um, so this one is called Shower Time. Mm -hmm. Uh and this is from at Spank Bank uh well it's Spank Banker U. Um and this is a gentleman, if I recall correctly, uh yes. So his Twitter says X rated trucker mature voyeur love to pick up thirsty men on my travels. So if you're into truckers, here you go, kids. Um, so this one is him at a truck stop uh, enjoying himself during shower time. But oh, wow. he uh, does have meetups while he's out on the road uh, with other folks and records them uh, with their permission. And it's hot. Huh. Pretty so, nice. There too. Um, so for if if you're watching us live and watching the videos, as we're kind of like these are all videos. Um, well, most the three of them have been videos so far. Two of them have been videos, so we're kind of like watching the video. So if we're quiet, that's why. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't turn on the sound. Sorry. Yeah, that that would go against YouTube. Um, and probably all the all the oh, podcasting yeah, no. platforms. Anyway, yeah, okay. I don't think the podcasting <laughs> platforms pay attention. Mm. All, the, all they do is just they just list the 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 RSS feed, so it's fun. Right. Huh. Nice. 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 You've given me probably three more people to follow, Gary. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, oh, damn, he's in Washington. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I know, but I haven't figured out yet if he does long haul. Because in the comments, we all be thirsty, and we're like, hey, if you're in my neighborhood, like, you know, suddenly we all want to be lot lizards and giving him a good time if he happens wow, to be stopped. Gary. What? what? <laughs> I haven't heard that term in so long. My dad was a trucker. That's where I learned that from. <laughs> Wow. And that's one of the nicer terms. Anyway. I know. <laughs> I mean, the only one I knew was trucker fucker. Well, that's not true. I, I knew of trucker fucker, but that's the different. That's just calling it what it is. Um, huh. Mm, okay. Sorry. Oh, no. I don't want that on. No. <laughs> that's okay. We can't hear it. In any case, moving on to the links. Uh, I mentioned before the war within uh, cinematic. Um... Damn, the 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 Blizzard cinematics team. I kind of wish that they were the ones that did the Warcraft movie. <laughs> <laughs> bomb, bomb. But um, it's, it, really, this is a teaser because it's not going to be out until like sometime next year. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not going to talk about Thrall, who's a big old dork. Fantasies uh, abound, I'm sure. But <laughs> just how good... Anduin looks is in freaking sane. I swear yeah. it it's like I doubted that that was CGI. Mm. It looked like they actually had an actor play that part on like a loose screen 
upset. Anduin is just so emotional. And you can feel that emotion. <laughs> it's it's just so so good. Anyways, Gary. Um, I have a couple of picks. Uh two of them are from Disney Plus. If you did not go out and see it and you do have a Disney Plus uh subscription account, I suggest you watch the movie Elemental. Mm. Um it did not necessarily do well in the box office, but it's a good Pixar animated film. It's it's based on the concept that all the elements um are alive and like so like you could be a fire element you could be a water element you can be air element you can be like an earth element um and so think zootopia mm -hmm. but with the elements um okay. and it's a it's a cute fun story and i really liked it i'm glad i went and saw it in the movie theater when it came out and i saw that it's on disney plus and i really suggest people check it out um could be good for younger kids, like a generation. I wouldn't say like little, little ones, but um, a lot of people like some of the animation is really, really done so well. Like it, and it just goes to show like how much things have changed since like Toy Story 1 um, in terms of like the technology. So there's that. If you are a person who likes um, the how things work kind of stuff. Uh, Behind the Attraction, which is a series that